Without me knowing, the lawyers representing or dealing with my claim and also the forensic accountants dealing with my claim put it together, and I was not involved with the figures, and they put it together and they included an amount for the work that I'd done over the 20 years. It's like another column heading. And that's been totally negated by them. In other words, government doesn't think anything I've done is worth anything. I think the first offer you received was um, shortly before your appearance before the Select Committee in January. Yeah. And you um, said publicly that it was derisory. It was. Still is. There's no doubt at all that the systemic failures identified so far have been brought to post offices' attention through their regular meetings with Second Side. And this alone raises the question as to why post office is continuing with their prosecutions of sub-postmasters when it is now so much more obvious that they are standing on very shaky legal ground. As I've mentioned before, these systemic failures are proven facts which are at the root of many of the sub-postmaster cases. Although from the second site briefing document presented at the Port Cullis House meeting, they're only going to be treated as um, an adjunct uh, to the issue of individual cases to the point where only a few of them uh, may be featured in their forthcoming report. It's evident to us that these systemic failures should become the yardstick that the individual cases are measured against as they're significantly easier for others to comprehend without the requirement of an in-depth knowledge of the finer points of horizon. The refocusing of the investigation on the systemic failures would not only offer a quicker and far more efficient method of addressing the whole issue, but would minimise the uh, information required from post office, which has been the main cause of the slow and um, at times no progress Second Sight has made with the individual um, cases. Um, did you get any um, reassurance back from the Minister? I don't recall. Um, no, I, can we I move, think I, yeah, sorry. Can we move on then, please, to poll 0014 5664. And look at page three, please. Uh, foot of the page. We're now on the 18th of July. This is another communication from you um, to the Minister. You refer to a reply of the 11th of July where you confirm that further cases can be put forward to review. Um, you say that you recently wrote to MPs who raised questions uh, about um, 47 cases that only ever seem to be um, commented on and you um, refer in the report sorry you, you say the 47 cases referred to in the report comprises of and then you give a breakdown and then if we scroll up the page please a bit further please Thank you. do you see that your email um, to the minister's correspondence address has found its way to um, the SHEX, the shareholder executive within the Department for Business Innovation and Skills. Mm. So this is as the email has been produced to us. We can't see um, how it got there. Um, address to um, Martin Edwards and um, Susan Crichton and two other members of the, or two members of the SHEX, and then if we just take that off, please. Uh, Mr. Whitehead within Biz um, says, Martin, Susan, the email letter below from Alan Bates at JFSA to Joe Swinson raises a number of issues which would be helpful for us to discuss with you before drafting a reply. I think a meeting within the next week or so might be the best way forwards, given the range and complexity of some of the issues involved. Uh, did you know or did you appreciate at the time that um, notwithstanding what had been said by uh, government ministers about um, operating an arm's length relationship with the post office, um, there was nonetheless a back channel of communications between the government and the post office? No, no I, I can't say I was aware of that with your correspondence being copied from um, 
at the government to the post office. I could understand them perhaps having some concern because I was in regular contact with many of the MPs there. Um, but uh, no, I can't um, say I was aware of it. And if we um, just go to page one, please. We can see on this page um, uh, emails within the post office, starting in the middle of the page, from Alwyn Lyons to Mark Davis, um, Martin Edwards and Susan Crichton. And she says, when discussing what reply to give, is um, the problem is that the problem we have is that he, that's you, doesn't know we um, have seen the letter we need to be careful that the minister is not um, seen to be aligning with us by us, help, uh, by us asking us to help her respond. I'll read that again. The problem we have is that he, that's you, doesn't know we've seen the letter. That's your letter. And we need to be careful that the minister is not seen to be aligning with us, that's the post office, by asking us to help her respond. So they're discussing essentially how to play it with you without revealing that the government has sent on your letter to the post office, correct? Seems to be that way, yeah. You say in your witness statement that there were no changes as a result of your letter, um, uh, the one that we've just looked at. Did um, Joe Swinson um, in fact respond to you? I don't recall. I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember. Can we turn on to another letter you wrote to Joe Swinson a year later, on the 16th of April 2014, when she was still Minister for Postal Affairs? Um, poll 302 2683. Uh, we can see the date and to whom it's addressed. And for some context, um, by that date, uh, was it right that no post office investigation had been completed to a sufficient state for Second Sight to complete its own reports? Yeah. Uh, you set out um, how the scheme was meant to work, if we just scroll down and keep scrolling and keep scrolling, keep scrolling. You say that the above structure was agreed and published at scheme launch, and the documentation is uh, still available for downloading at. Essentially, that's the documentation that I showed you um, earlier. Yes. Unfortunately, the reality of where the scheme is actually at is very different. Um, as at the date of writing, so this is April, mid-April 2014, during uh, the time the scheme was open for applications, 150 cases were accepted although it should be noticed that since the scheme has closed, there have been others who would have applied if they'd been aware of its existence. Of the 150, the earliest that Poll became aware of the names of individuals and the identities of the post offices that were to be involved was as follows. Uh, next bullet point. Once the criteria to enter the scheme had been met and the working group had approved the initial application, the personalised CQR, can you um, explain what the CQR was? It was the initial um, report um, that was sent out to the relevant applicant for completion um, with the um, um, assistance of their PA. So far, the returned completed CQRs are as follows, and you set them out over the page. And then you say, top of the next page, yet to date, Poll has not finalised a single case report to the point where it's ready for the working group to consider its suitability for being sent to mediation. And realistically, that could still be a considerable um, time off. If we scroll down further and keep going, and keep going, Let's stop there. That third paragraph, you say, regardless of what it says publicly, pollen practice seems not only to be hardening its corporate defense but now seems to be prepared to invoke the protection of pu the public purse as their last line of justification for not righting the wrongs they've inflicted on so many. It appears uh, whatever poll can block, it does. 
for some reason, the post office is the only one that doesn't seem to be able to recognise what everybody else can see so clearly. And then you talk about um, the only way we're going to resolve this is through the media and the courts. And so what was your principal concern by the time you were writing this letter? I think, um, I think this is a time when um, the post office had changed their general counsel. I think this was at the point where Chris Ojaard had come along. Do correct me if I'm wrong. If getting the. Uh, I think that was September 2013 from memory. Yeah, and it's coming along. <clears throat> and I think w when he turned up, I think he had a very clear remit to get rid of the mediation scheme or to change it or to bin it or whatever because he was also part of this Project Sparrow which was, as we later to find, um, uh, monitoring what was going on in that scheme and how it was going ahead. Now, I had a, a big discussion with, with um, Chris O'Shard over the um, interpretation of the aims and the objectives of the scheme, and that was earlier on in the, the year, that year. And um, I remember I had to detail him uh, to him the whole scheme, how it's meant to work, and I also copied in Sir Anthony Hooper on that correspondence as well. But basically, it seemed they were trying to twist it, twist it, twist it the whole time to take away its effectiveness. And um, it, uh, it, it, just, it just wasn't, it didn't feel wholesome anymore. <laughs> it didn't feel like we were after the truth anymore. It just felt like we were trying to defend post office's position in all of this.